All right, guys, uh, good afternoon. We got some updates from Carroll concerning the health of this team, and unfortunately, he didn't really have very comforting things to say. So let's uh, go through it here. Uh, I don't believe this is the full slate of updates, but this is the major stuff. So let's uh, just go through it. Let's take our medicine and let's try to process it appropriately. Let's try to be reasonable, but let's try to also be fair. <laughs> so we got a few tweets from a Brady Henderson about what Carol had to say a little bit ago. Uh, Pete said that Charles Cross and Abe Lucas are hurting and it will be hard for them to play Sunday at Detroit. So if Carol is saying that it's unlikely we have them against the, the Lions... You can pretty much scratch them off now. It would take a miracle. And if they do play, that's probably bad. That probably means they're playing when they shouldn't be playing. So, yeah, Cross and Lucas, I think you can kind of forget about them playing this Sunday against the Lions. Losing one of those guys, maybe you could overcome that. Maybe you could come up with some kind of a game plan to mitigate it. Both? Uh-uh. So... I'm sure we'll be able to come up with something better than what we saw against the Rams in the second half when we didn't literally three yards, I think, after those injuries. But is it going to be significantly better? I don't know. Is it going to be better enough to matter? Is it going to be better enough to where we can actually find a way to win a game? I mean, we'll talk about that more later this week, but I think you guys kind of know where I'm going with that one. Like... It's not realistic to lose your tackles, your two starting offensive tackles, and expect the offense to perform. It, and, of course, we're going to have a week to plan for it. Clearly, this team is going to have an opportunity to try to come up with some kind of a game plan to mitigate the losses, but it's still probably going to be too much. I'm just trying to be real here. And, Carol said what I already kind of talked about yesterday. It's not realistic for Jason Peters to be ready by Sunday. So Jason Peters, uh, unfortunately, we need him now, and he's not going to be ready now in all likelihood. So if Carroll is acknowledging these things, it's almost certainly going to play out that way. So Peters is not going to be the shot in the arm the offense needs on the left side. And... I know Kerr, I'll say this, I know Kerhan can play better than the way that he played on Sunday against the Rams. I know he can play better than that, but is he really going to be able to handle Aiden Hutchinson? I kind of doubt it. So that's kind of the big problem right now. That's kind of the big concern. Probably no Cross, probably no Lucas, probably no Peters. And we're dealing with Aiden Hutchinson and I think Justin Houston. That That's a recipe for disaster. That's a recipe for this season to get off to the worst start possible. Now, in terms of personnel news, we did sign a player earlier today, Raekwon O'Neal, an offensive lineman off the Buccaneers practice squad. He's somebody who played pretty well in the preseason but couldn't quite make the 53-man. Now, he played well by the standards of the Buccaneers and still couldn't make their 53-man, so that doesn't fill me with a ton of confidence. Buccaneers don't exactly have a great offensive line. They're having some injury issues up there of their own. So while kudos to Raekwon O'Neal for making a positive impression in the preseason, I it's hard for me to sit here and say that guy's going to be the savior. Uh, Henderson did talk a little bit more about O'Neal here in this tweet. He's played both tackle spots and center, but the Seahawks believe he's best at left tackle. So that really may be the guy you play at left tackle because Stone Forsyth, I'm sorry, I liked the pick when we made it for Stone Forsyth a couple of years ago. I thought it was a good pick, but he just hasn't really developed at all, and I don't think you can go into this game with him. So I'm sure we're gonna put uh, O'Neal at the on the left side, and I right side. I guess we just hope that Kerhan does play better. And again, like I said, I know Kerhan can play better than that. It's not. The, the two issues are not equivalent, right? There's a huge difference between Forsyth and and Kerhan. Kerhan has played well before, but that that's still a terrible situation 
to be in going into a game with Aiden Hutchinson on one side and Justin Houston on the other. But uh, Raekwon O'Neal's he's he's the guy that we're going to bring in to try to make this a little bit not not a little bit not so bad I guess and um, as far as the moves you can make it's better than it's better than a lot of things you could do so I got no issue with that that's probably the best thing you can do right now to bring in somebody like that somebody young somebody who's done a little bit of something in this league because uh, excuse me I'm sorry uh, um. The guys who have done a lot in this league, you're not going to be able to get. So that's not happening. So we did about the best we could do here, I guess. Uh, we did get some more injury-related updates. Obviously, nothing else concerning this upcoming game matters nearly as much as Cross and Lucas. But it's worth noting that we did get a little bit of information about Witherspoon and Adams, who are two guys that we're hoping can bail out our defense. So... Witherspoon and Adams are both practicing today, according to Carroll. Uh, Witherspoon will be a full go, so if we get to the end of the day and we see the official injury report and he's not listed or he's listed as a full participant, then that is a very good indicator that he will play this week. So that's good news. The bad news is Adams is going to have limited reps this week, or at the very least today, and they don't expect him to play Sunday. The Brady tweet, Henderson tweet here says this will mark Adams' return to practice, so probably asking too much for him to play Sunday. So, in all likelihood, no Adams. And I, I've been very firm in my belief this week that a player is not going to fix our problems. The problems are much bigger than a player. The issues that we're having right now are much bigger than, oh, we're going to get this guy back and he'll fix it. We're going to get that guy back, he's going to fix it. Or we're going to trade for this guy and he's going to fix it. But obviously you would rather have Witherspoon out there than anybody else. And you would rather have Adams out there than anybody else. Because those are guys who have proven they can who have proven they can play elite, football at an elite level beyond what we've seen from the guys we have replacing them. I understand that it can change something, but at the same time, I'm I'm very aware of the fact that since the moment Jamal Adams put on the Seahawks jersey, he just hasn't been the same player, and that was years ago. So I'm very aware of the fact that it, it's hard to believe he's going to be the savior when he's put up the coverage numbers he's put up in Seattle. It's very hard to believe that there's anything he can do to make this situation fixed. He can make it better, but he can't fix it. And it's not his fault. It's bigger than him. It's bigger than any one or even any two players. So, uh, on the one hand, it's great that Witherspoon's going to be back, and it sucks that Adams won't be back, it looks like. But I don't believe that that's the, even really the answer. Like, on the offense, I do believe... The players are the answer. Cross and Lucas versus Raekwon O'Neal and Jake Curhan is everything. But, yeah. It, uh, defense, I'm just a little jaded right now. And I'm going to have to see something different for an extended period of time to believe otherwise. All right. So those are the updates from Carroll and some general early thoughts on them. Nothing too shocking. But overall, it's still, it's not a good start to the week. All right, I'll see you guys later. Go Hawks, and uh, we're going to have to work hard to uh, find a way to overcome this.